Hey guys, Drew here. Uh, I just wanted to do a video that is working through an example of finding the domain of a composite function. Uh, this in particular example is exercise 1.2, question number two that I just pulled off of your course Piazza. Um, and I noticed that there's a similar question on the assignment that seems to be getting a lot of uh, a lot of trouble and a lot of people are coming in and asking for help so I thought that I would go over a, a slightly easier example and then hopefully it helps you for your assignment so let's get right into it this one says uh, it defines f of x as x squared minus 5 and it says that it has the domain from negative 3 to 3 we also know g of x is equal to the square root of x and that exists for all x that are on the interval from 0 to 100 including. So we want to find f of g of x and its domain. So the another way that you can write f of g of x is f of g of x where uh, g of x is the input of the function f of x. So another way that this would look with our numbers, we know that f of x is x squared minus 5. So instead of x, we're going to replace that with the square root of x, which is g of x. So that leaves us with the square root of x squared minus 5. And then we can simplify this and we get x squared minus 5. So this is the answer for finding the function f of g of x and this is the easier part of the question the harder part is finding its domain because things get a little bit more complicated so a big misconception that I have seen is that a lot of people think that we just have to take the strictest the strictest domain and looking at these we've got negative 3 to 3 and we've got 0 to 100 so some people think okay well negative 3 is not or we know that zero is greater than negative three. So we're gonna start it at zero and then we'll just go up to three. So this is actually incorrect. And I will explain. Because the domain of a composite function for like f of g of x, let's say, it we know that x must be in the domain of g and that g of x must be in the domain of f. And that is just the, the definition from your textbook of how we define the domain of a composite function. But let's let's reason through it with some logic, right? So we know that for f of x, so for, oh, let me scroll down my page a little bit. For f of x, we know that that only exists when we're between negative three and three, or when our x is between negative three and three right but for g of x we know that g of x is the input of f of x so if g of x is that is the that's the output of the square root of x right so we know that the square root of x which is what we're putting inside of f of x that must be between negative 3 and 3 as well right so now we want to look at g of x. So we know g of x is equal to the square root of x, which is this guy. And we just said that it has to be between negative 3 and 3. But when we defined g of x, we said that it could be between 0 and 100, right? So what we want to do, we want to plug in 0 into g of x and we need to see is is that going to be between negative 3 and 3 and if it's not then we're going to figure out when it is so let's try let's try plugging in 0 as i'm sure you guys know g of 0 square root of 0 is pretty obviously 0 so we know 0 is clearly in between negative 3 and 3 which means that 0 is going to be the floor of our uh, domain of our composite function. So I'm just going to put a check mark there. So let me scroll down a little bit. Sweet. 
So now we want to try 100. G of 100. That's the square root of 100, which is equal to 10. And 10 is clearly greater than 3, which means that it's not going to be in the composite functions domain. It's too large. So what we want to do is figure out when is the square root of x going to be equal to 3? Because we know 3 is, is the highest value that we can input into our function. So we want to find when the maximum value of x is that this will be 3. So let's do that. We've got, we know, we we're finding where root x is equal to 3, which is the max, right? So then it becomes as easy as squaring both sides, and we get x is equal to 9. And that's our answer. So we know that x must be between 0 and 9. And this is the, the domain of f of g. So that is the final answer. If you guys have any more questions or this didn't make sense, I urge you to come into the Weave TA office hours where you can join on Microsoft Teams or send us an email. Um, and we can work with, question, work with you guys uh, on questions like this uh, in one-on-one -on -one help sessions. Uh, you can also come in with a group and we'd be happy to help uh, all of you at the same time. Uh, but anyways, uh, that's it for me. I hope this was helpful and I'll catch you guys next time.